Hello, I'm Alex Gorioran, and I'm one of your hosts for the JWU Explore from Home video podcast series. And we want to welcome you back for this university-wide initiative as we highlight the expertise of some of our faculty and alumni and how their experiences at Johnson & Wales have prepared them for their career today. Each video highlights a conversation between a JWU professor, an alum, or an industry partner. And today's conversation will be focusing on media communication studies. And whether it's social, music, television, or print, we all consume media daily and in different ways. Analyzing content and communicating effectively are critical skills in today's world. And they're cornerstones of the Johnson & Wales University Media and Communication Studies major. And today we're gonna to be hearing from uh, Professor and Dr. Chris Westgate and Jessica Stewart, who is a JWU alum and account manager at RGA and some thoughts on how this program equips students with the skills needed to succeed in a media or communications career. And uh, just a little bit on our uh, panelists today. Uh, so Dr. Christopher Joseph Westgate, uh, he is a media scholar whose research program includes digital culture, journalism studies, Latinx media, popular music, and race, gender, sexuality. His peer-reviewed articles have been published in Popular Music and Society, media, culture, and society, and elsewhere. Dr. Westgate is a professor of media and communication studies at Johnson & Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island, and he has more than a decade of experience in the radio and music industries. And joining us also is Jessica Stewart. Uh, she's a 2017 alum and was part of the first graduating class of media and communication studies at JWU. And she currently works at RGA, a digital advertising agency in New York as an account manager. And at RGA, she has worked on brands such as Samsung Global, Samsung Electronics America, Universal Music Group. And prior to her role at RGA, Jessica was at ID Public Relations, working on brands such as Peloton, Nintendo, and Swarovski Crystals. So welcome and, and thank you both for, for joining us today. This is certainly a, a really interesting topic and obviously a great major there at, at uh, JWU. And, and Chris, I was wondering if you could share with us a little bit about the media and communication program at JWU and some of the unique experiential opportunities. Sure, Alexis. So we created the program in 2011 and it is a broad program in the sense that we prepare students for a variety of careers, both within and without outside of the media industries. Uh, and the program itself focuses on global media, media industries. So thinking about, let's say, multinational media companies and organizations and the ways in which those companies and organizations create content or products and how we as consumers receive the content and products, how we make meaning out of the content and products. Uh, so you think about Netflix, for instance, and all of the dozens of television shows that you watch on a regular basis and analyzing the meaning of those shows and the demographics of the audiences of those shows, for instance. So that's one example of what we do in the major. And the experiential component is so important because our major references both the theories or ideas of those media forms, music, television, news, the theories and principles that surround them, as well as the practices that uh, accompany them. So the audiences who consume them, but the meaning that those audiences make of them. And one way that we uh, engage those theories is through internships. So that Jess can talk a little bit about as well, her experience in an internship, which is an opportunity for students to really put into practice what they learn in the classroom. So internships are a fundamental component of our majors definition of experiential education, but we also include under that umbrella study abroad opportunities, and we have those throughout the world through JWU Global and JWU Study Abroad. And we also include directed work experiences, shadowing and mentoring experiences as well as part of our definition of experiential education. That's great. Thanks, Chris. And so speaking of that, Jess, you had a, a pretty engaging uh, experience at Johnson & Wales and, uh, and the internship program. Can you share with us some of those experiences and how that's shaped your career today? Yeah, um, I did around seven internships, um, all wow. very, very different <laughs> from each other. Um, but what was really important was, I think, 
we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as students to kind of go in and study something and know what we want to do and kind of do that for the rest of our lives. And I was really grateful to be able to sub credits like for um, internships and figure out what I didn't want to do, um, which was really important. So I interned, I did a social media internship in New York. I was a development intern in Los Angeles at Lee Daniels um, Entertainment, which was reading scripts and determining whether or not they were worth going to production. Um, and I also was a sales assistant at um, the CW Providence, which has now um, been absorbed by WPRI, I believe. And they were all really great. They, and it was, I could apply things that I was using in class, which was awesome. That's great, that's great. So, you know, the J. Wood education exposes students to new ways of thought and, and challenging students to think critically and outside of their viewpoint. Um, Tell us a little bit of, of both Chris and Jess on both sides. Why, why do you feel students uh, should make this investment in the career at Joe Ed Education, specifically on the, in the Media Communications uh, Studies program? Sure. So our program prepares students, as I said, to work in the media industry. So as news reporters, uh, as script writers, as directors, as producers, as editors in film, in news, in television, in music, video games, you name it, um, but also outside of the media industry. So as speech writers, for instance, or communications directors or social media strategists or what Jess is doing. And you can do that outside of the traditional media industry. So you could work for a bank, for instance, or a hospital, um, large corporations, small non-for-profit organizations. It really does run the gamut. And so we prepare students to really think about how to create as well as edit, translate, disseminate information across a variety of industries and platforms too. So really building those creative and critical thinking skills, as well as the written and oral communication skills that will prepare students to succeed in any position that they set their sights on for the future. And, and just on your side, you know, the, the, you know, now that you've graduated for a few years and you know, the, the media communications landscape is, is constantly changing. Um, what are you seeing out there that you could maybe uh, give some advice to some students that are thinking about a career in this industry? Um, I think to piggyback off of Dr. Weske, um, communications is so broad, so you can really, really do anything and the skills are so transferable. So I worked in entertainment and now I'm working in advertising, which they're two kind of, they're different. Um, but I'm still able to use the same skills that I had. So, and it's also a growing market. I think we are always looking for effective communicators. We always want people who can write. We always want people who can research. We always want people who can communicate and they have emotional intelligence. And that those are a foundation of skills that are going to take you anywhere, whether it be in a nonprofit or at a bank or, you know, at a, like as an executive, like you will be successful no matter what. Um, and it's also a fun major. It's like, it's not like you're studying something boring. You're getting to know the different backgrounds of different people and different cultures and different social societies. It's, it's very interesting. It's a good thing to study. And, you know, we always have something to talk about, which is always important. Hmm. That's great. Well, you know, let's talk about that a little bit further. Um, Chris, uh, you know, as we kind of look at the industry landscape a little bit further, uh, what kind of demand exists in the industry and what kind of positions can students expect to be able to explore for uh, future careers? Absolutely. So if you want to bring up one of your slides, uh, we can talk a little bit about some of the growth that we're experiencing here. Um, at least initially, um, you can see here that by 2028, we're going to have a, about an average of 4% growth uh, within the industry, which is going to create more than 27,000 jobs. Um, and that's a significant growth. And I think if you compare that to other types of industries, not just in terms of the growth, but also in terms of the income generation potential, I think you'll be quite pleased. So the average, as you can see here, the median uh, annual wage, um, which is not the average, but sort of what's half of what's below, below, there's half below that and half above that, right? So 
59,230, um, which is, you know, a respectable income to start off, I think, um, whereas other sort of positions and other occupations and other industries are lower, right? The average of the, the median rather is 39,810. So that's significant and that's important. Um, and I think what you're seeing too is not just here on this slide, but also on the next slide, we'll, we'll take a look in and see sort of the broad sort of panoply of positions that exists from announcers and editors, as I suggested before, but also photographers, PR specialists, uh, technical writers. We have in our major quite a few students who are interested in becoming producers and editors as well as writers. And I always recommend that students think about, in this case, technical writing, because it's an area that isn't something that occurs to everyone at first but it is a growing area. And as you can see, the sort of median salary here is $72,850, again, occurring uh, according to the Bureau for Labor Statistics. So that's a pretty good salary, I think, to kind of shoot for, at least in your early years. Um, and that's something that's you know going to grow in demand as we continue to think about how artificial intelligence uh, and other sort of newer technologies, algorithms, for instance, um, robotics really do play a role in the sort of technical processes of communication. We're going to need people who are able to translate all of that technical information for a wide variety of audiences. And so we're preparing our current students to do that uh, for future positions. And technical writers are something that will definitely be in high demand in the future for sure. So yeah, yeah that's, I, that's, I would just start right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the marketplace today, we're certainly seeing a, a big need for for big data and art, artificial intelligence and analytical thinking, that are that are crucial skill sets for uh, for employees, but for students to to acquire uh, in their career. And can you maybe talk a little bit of how JWU prepares um, students for that skill set? And then, Jess, I'd love for you to maybe share some of your experiences in the classroom too uh, that you may have experienced with that. Absolutely. So. Unlike other schools and universities, we're unique in that we balance experiential education with liberal arts preparation. So while some schools and universities will tout the benefits of a liberal arts degree and taking courses in uh, the humanities and the arts and sciences and the social sciences and allowing you to just explore, um, and still other universities and schools will uh, you know, recognize the benefit of just specializing in a particular skill set or areas uh, of skills, uh, we do both and we blend both together really well. And the good news, uh, sort of the result of that is that students will be really well prepared to, as Jess was suggesting earlier, really develop those transferable skills that will translate to these new types of positions that Alexis was just referencing, big data, AI, analytical thinking, um, and so really thinking about the future in terms of how to apply those skills and to be open to reskilling and upskilling, uh, both within your current position, as well as looking to new types of positions that exist within your industry, as well as in cognate or uh, closely aligned industries. Um, so, um, you know, Jess was mentioning advertising and entertainment. Um, that's a really great example of being able to leapfrog from one industry to another. Um, so data analytics is definitely really important. Uh, and we're preparing students to think in that area in terms of how to manage and process information, but be able to then communicate that information in a visually compelling way. So in many of our core required classes, students will design presentations with images that yes, are scintillating, but they also convey complex information in a very direct and simple to understand form. And this will become increasingly important in the future as we begin to think about ways that we can parlay what we learn in college with what new industries and new positions in those industries are demanding of us, particularly in the area of data, data analytics. Uh, another example is user experience. You know, our students take courses in psychology, they take courses in literature, so many different fields and areas in the arts and humanities, as well as the social sciences. And what that does is that prepares them to think very creatively about how people process information. 
Great. And Jess, um, from your time as a student, what are some of the experiences that, uh, that you can share that uh, you've used in your current role? Yeah, um, I have to laugh. So Dr. Westgate was famous for assigning us all these scholarly journals, um, which were, I mean, as a freshman, you're reading these things that are very high brown, like, what am I getting myself into? But even today, like, I mean, Bell's Hooks has found a way to follow me into advertising, which I never would have imagined. But um, we have something in advertising, which is strategy. And we have people that are designated their strategists. I am not one of them, but I have to understand strategy. All they are doing is reading super highbrow data and translating it and being like, we need to be, when we're developing products, like this is what the demographic is using. This is what they are leaning towards. This is the type of, you're gonna get X, Y, Z to follow this. Like that is so, so important um, in the back end of advertising, which I don't think before I wound up in advertising, I had never thought of that. I never thought about all the research that goes into developing product, you know, you just kind of think of someone having a million dollar idea, but the reality is million dollar ideas are backed up by data and they are backed up by research and educating yourself. Um, so it is really important to know how to read those scholarly journals and how to kind of comb through them with a, um, with the, the lens that you need to prepare yourself, you know, to build these products. Um, I also want to say um, that I know a lot of kids come in and they want to do something more creative and they want to do film production. The way that I can kind of, and, or design or anything like that, um, a lot of communications is commercial art at the end of the day. So you need to, you are learning to communicate if you're taking a design class or you're taking a film production class, you are learning how to communicate a message through a different medium. and you are also taught in a lot of the classes how to kind of like analyze those meanings and kind of understand what they are communicating. So that's really important as well. Great, great. I mean, you know, the exciting thing about a career of media communications is uh, you're just, you're a perfect example of that, of being able to kind of jump around from almost one industry to another, uh, which is pretty exciting. So, you know, that's a, a great takeaway for our students that, you know, obviously you need all this base knowledge and information, but it really kind of opens up your world to a lot of different opportunities. So that's, that's pretty exciting. Uh, and, you know, a lot of students are obviously in this day and age, really evaluating uh, the value of education. Uh, you know, is there, is there something that both of you could share on why now is a, is a good time to bet on education and attending Johnson and Wales? Sure. Um, that's a great question. I think I recently read in the New York Times an op-ed by Frank Bruni called The End of College as We Knew It. And it's he's basically reminding people of how important college is. And there's some interesting points that he makes. And one of them is that college helps us think about our humanity and it helps ground us in the moment and become more empathic human beings and expand our perspective. And I do think that some of the readings I assigned, just just mentioned one of them, from Bell Hooks, you know, her work is transformational in understanding how race functions in contemporary society and how we engage with concepts of what it means to be a person of color, white privilege. How do you think critically about those concepts and develop the tools, the arsenal, the language, the vocabulary, if you don't go to college, if you don't Think about how to have those kinds of conversations and debates with your friends and family, but also with people you don't know. And so, so many of our classes, I think, give students an opportunity to reflect on some of the more pressing issues, political or otherwise, um, that really do we encounter on a regular basis. And I'll, I'm sure Jess can speak to some of the ways in which race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation class these are really important issues that have come up both in the classes that, you know, she took with us, but also probably in her, in her workplace too. Yeah. Um, it's college is so important. And I think a lot of people think of it as maybe a waste of money, but it's, it's the first time you're getting out of your house and getting away from your parents. Like who doesn't want that freedom? Um, you are, I, for me, I'm from Philadelphia. So I went to school in Rhode Island and New England is completely different place than Philadelphia. It's a different culture. There's different people. Um, and Johnson and Wales is an incredibly diverse 
university. I, I mean, even in the major, uh, that for me, it was the first time I was encountering people that were Jewish or of a different race, of a different background, of a different social class. And I, what was so great about the classes was we were reading things and then having discussions in class and they were never arguments and they never got heated, but you're, it, it teaches you how to listen to the different perspectives and how to kind of empathize and realize that, okay, your way isn't the only way. And the way you grew up and the way that we're kind of conditioned, we have to break that. Like there are so many books right now about how in your twenties you need to reset your brain because everything that you've learned and how you were raised is different from how you are going to be as an adult. And um, we, the world is constantly changing and we're going through a lot and we need to be more human and create a more human future. And you're going to get that from going to college and kind of learning more about, you know, being more human. And when things are tough and you don't know what to do and you don't have direction, I cannot emphasize enough. It is so important to just make an investment in yourself. And college is a really, really good way to invest in yourself. It is four years. Give yourself something to look forward to. Give yourself something to work towards. Keep the motivation up. Figure out what you want to do. It is, it's the best thing you can do for yourself. That's great. Thank, thank you, Jess. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so in, in closing, I mean, those, those are some really great points to, on the value of education and really being a better human, <laughs> you know, it's like how a better to summarize that. Um, so, you know, as we kind of close and wrap up here in, in our conversation, um, are there any uh, last thoughts or advice that uh, we can give our audience or any uh, current prospective students out there? Sure. I would definitely say, you know, think, uh, as critically as possible about the news that you consume on a regular basis. Uh, be mindful of the fact that misinformation and disinformation run rampant across social, social media. And, you know, social media can be wonderful platforms, can offer us wonderful platforms for connecting with one another across the world in ways that we wouldn't be able to do. They're very positive, but then there are also some drawbacks to them as well. And that's sort of the, the requirement I think that we have as critical consumers of information to really develop that, those media literacy skills just as we consume information on a regular basis. And so just to be mindful of that too, especially in the realm of politics. Yeah, and I would piggyback off that, but also say um, in terms of careers with social media, the landscape is always changing. We are looking for TikTok specialists right now in the, the job market. We are looking for people that understand the dances that you do on TikTok and <laughs> how we can market them and how we can create them. So really there is nothing too small out there and there's nothing too big. You can, uh, the world is going to change no matter what we do. We do need people that are more digital natives and you know, if you have, if you're really big on TikTok right now or you really like Patreon or anything we're gonna need that we need those people right now so keep going it's gonna it's fun everything at this major is fun and just learning how we all interact so and come take a tour of our center for media production where we have 4k technology incredible equipment a podcasting studio editing suites uh, galore it's definitely something worth coming to johnson wales to see in our providence campus and don't be afraid to get involved i think um I really look back fondly on the time that I was on the Campus Herald and I'm not a writer right now, but I, all the writing, the articles that I wrote helped me get a job in PR and, and that was my portfolio. So the things that you're going to do extra outside of class are going to help you along the way too. And Johnson Wales is really great at um, encouraging students to get involved and they have a lot of great opportunities for students. Well, that's great. Thank you for uh, thank you for all of that uh, advice and and support. And uh, it and it makes me want me to go back to to uh, college here and do it all over again. Uh, but thank you, Jess and Chris, for joining us and sharing all this great information and how the curriculum at JWU has influenced your career, Jess. So thank you for that. And 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 thank you, Chris, for really kind of tapping into the experience and opportunities that uh, a career can afford someone with this career. Uh, so to all of you exploring at home, uh, stay tuned for our next video series, uh, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you all soon. Take care.